job equals clinical experience plus AMC exam plus application and CV plus interview performance. Over 5,000 international medical graduates getting jobs in Australia is a big number. Now, majority of them are GPs. Also, there are doctors entering via the specialist and standard pathway. But as we'll see, the landscape is changing rapidly. I recently got a message from one of the young doctors, which I found very interesting, which was that, can you please tell me the simplest pathway to come to Australia with whatever route it is? And I will follow exactly your advice as simple as one, two and three. So let me explain that simplicity. It is only relevant if you have good training, good qualifications and experience, plus commitment to improve your CV and to apply for jobs regularly. But I still believe that Australia is very lenient to allow jobs post AMC part one, GP short term training without AMC and even specialist pathway as long as the process is followed. But this is sending an opposite message. People often message me, email me, or comment on videos like I've passed AMC1, I've got X number of months in clinical experience in medicine, cardiology, emergency and ICU, which is excellent. But then they ask me that dreaded question, what are my chances? And that's where now I have to say it depends. As now times are different. Imagine if there is one medical job and there are two candidates to be shortlisted. Obviously, the candidate who will be shortlisted will be the one with better clinical experience, good CV and application, but above all, who's interviewed well. So I've come up with an equation. Job equals clinical experience plus AMC exam plus application and CV plus interview performance. And there you have it. It's simple maths. And that's why we actually consistently see people from overseas, from India, and now even from Turkey, and Middle Eastern countries given preference to the people who are already in Australia because they've got good credentials. There are four clear pathways and let me tell you the challenges within each of the pathways. So the first is standard pathway, second specialist pathway, short term training pathway, and then lastly a competent authority pathway. And for the relevance, I will tell you the pros and cons of each of the pathway and then the conclusion at the end. Standard pathway. Now standard pathway is basically AMC1 and or AMC clinical and then applying for jobs. People often ask me that if I have done AMC one, what are my chances? People who often get jobs easily are the ones who could demonstrate good clinical experience, but also apply smartly and they interview very well. Now, specialist pathway. If you're working as a specialist back home in your own country, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, or any other country for that matter, you can apply for a specialist pathway. However, you have to understand there are requirements. You have to understand the demand of your specialty as well. For example, if you're applying for surgery, dermatology, anesthesia, you will need to be super competitive. You need to have a good level of specialist experience back on your own country. There's a process to follow. Firstly, the training program that you've entered in your own home country is after an open competitive process, like an entrance exam, interview, or something that puts you on the edge to be accepted in that program. The training pathway in itself is completed in good mix of tertiary and non-tertiary teaching hospitals for the duration of at least five plus years, and in some cases like anesthesia, six or seven years. Then completed your fellowship or specialist level exam from your country. You may then have to demonstrate that you have obtained an almost like an intermediary or fellow position, or in India, they do a senior resident position whilst you were transitioning onto a consultant position rather than just landing a consultant job in your lap. Finally, you must be working as a consultant in your own specialty in a good public or private hospital for at least three plus year, more the merrier. Why? Because in role as a consultant, the, the application form is specifically asked about your clinical on-call responsibility, your, you know, your operative and procedural experience, your logbooks, the known clinical responsibilities like clinical governance portfolios, research, publication and audits. And on top of that, you are current with your CPD requirements in your own area of chosen special. You then have to put everything in this detailed application form. And you know what I've observed helping number of these candidates, it takes months to complete the application form. And I can see people struggling with the terminology, the relevant words as per the specialist college requirement, despite there are detailed guidelines from them. After the application form is submitted, then there is a 90 minutes detailed interview process, which the specialist colleges would pretty much grill you uh, about all of the things that you've put in the application form. 
you have done well, you have to then apply for transition registrar position, which requires a very disciplined approach to job applications. You have to redraft your job CV for an Australian job market. And then do interviews regularly to obtain a niche specialty like acute medical specialty, emergency specialty, ICU, surgery, dermatology, whatever it is relevant to your case. And then finally, when you've completed all the requirements, you will be granted a special status like a titles of FRACS, FASM, FRACS, CP, then you again have to apply for a consultant level jobs in Australia. And But the process, yes, it becomes easier after that. Competent authority, if you have worked in New Zealand, in the UK, in the US, or any other similar health system in Europe, as a resident, after doing your internship, and you've passed their licensing exam, like PLAB or USMLE, or whatever the licensing exams might be in that country, then on top of that, you have got you know, a clinical experience in the country, then you can apply for a competent authority pathway. That's on a pretense that you are primarily a graduate from Pakistan, India, or any other developing country. The question that I get frequently asked that I've got a GMC registration through membership exam pathway or some, some pathway, and I've been working in the UK for more than two years or three years or five years or 10 years for the matter. Can I qualify for a competent authority pathway? Have a look at the rules. It says that you have to have two crucial components. One is your licensing exam, that is PLAB. Yes, you have to have passed both the components of PLAB, plus 12 months of supervised clinical experience in NHS in the UK. Now, it, that supervision could be in a private hospital or public hospital, doesn't matter, has to be supervised. And if you're coming from the USMLE, I don't know for what reason, you have to have 24 months of supervised training as well, almost like being in a residency. Short-term training pathway is not really a pathway. It is like coming to Australia to gain further clinical experience in your own specialty. Now, at a very senior level, that is. For example, if you're an FCPS trainee or an MD trainee, at the end of your specialty training period, you can come here for the maximum of three years for further enhancing your understanding towards a niche area of your specialty. It does not make you eligible for fellowship exam here in Australia, nor does it give you any form of permanent registration or direction toward a permanent residency in Australia. If you have a change of heart at the end of your short-term training, you have to sit an AMC exam because you won't be eligible for either a competent authority or the specialist pathway by the end of it. GP pathways. Now, GPs are quite different. They've had an excellent opportunity when it comes to getting the jobs because there's a huge demand for the GPs in rural areas. I repeat, rural areas. And that is why the College of General Practitioners have realized we need to get more GPs who have good clinical GP experience and some sort of postgraduate exam like MRCGP or some of the European exams from European countries. There's a list which is available on the College of General Practitioners website. And this is called a GP specialist pathway. They can apply for GP experience or PEP pathway. But remember, it is not just MRCGP or that specialist exam, it is also a clinical experience, the CPD activities. And on top of that, you're going to be working in a small regional or more likely a rural town with restriction on your registration. And that is called a 10 year moratorium. Recently, I've seen GP practices, they're very picky about who they're going to choose to work as a GP in their regional or rural practice. They find communication skills and too many requirements or requests from the GPs to be a hindrance to their own work culture that they've established in their GP practice. I have even now heard of some GPs who are unable to pass the English test requirement despite being offered contracts. Conclusion, there are no easy pathways for doctors here in Australia. Every pathway has got its own essential requirement. It is the processes and intricacies that you must follow. If you follow any pathway with good approach and preparation, any pathway could be simple as one, two, three, as I said. Number two, standard pathway is by far the biggest pathway where international medical graduates are able to get their first job. And we've seen plenty of examples of that. But you have to realize that there is more requirements in terms of you know clinical experience, passing the AXE exams, the English test requirement, and above all, how you present your CV. I've not even seen your CV to make a comment on your chances. And then finally, if you get an interview, how well do you interview? How many people are shortlisted for that single position? Doctors with good training, good clinical experience, and good communication skills will find it easy to find jobs and getting into training programs and even completing the specialist exams assessment. 
The point of making this video is not to discourage you, but to help you prepare and develop a mindset that it requires diligence, discipline and direction and commitment for whatever pathway that you choose to land your first job here in Australia. If you're able to keep up to those intricacies, you will make any pathway easier for you. But if you're not really following the steps, then it would be hard, waste of time and above all, waste of money. I hope it makes sense. Look after yourself and each other. Goodbye.